3. What is life? If we're trying to build an image which reflects all aspects of reality, how do life and consciousness fit into this picture? Erwin Schrodinger's definition of life is that it's a unique process which creates pockets of negative entropy. Physicists talk about the beginning of the universe being the most highly ordered, lowest entropy version of our universe, and how the arrow of time represents an overall climb in the amount of entropy, despite the efforts of life within those little pockets where, as Dylan Thomas put it so beautifully, it rages against the dying of the light. This theme of life and consciousness being like a fire, a spark, that somehow engages with space-time and our fifth-dimensional probability space to keep itself moving forward is the theme of a number of the 26 songs I created for this project. I talked about those songs and this way of thinking about life and creativity in a blog entry called Novelty. The phrase self-excited circuit comes from a paper published in 1979 by physicist John Wheeler. You can read about it in the Wikipedia article on digital physics. As part of his cognitive theoretic model of the universe, the CTMU, Christopher Langan, who some of you will know as the smartest man in America, has published an animated version of the simple drawing Wheeler created for his paper on the self-excited circuit, showing a U standing for universe, incorporating an eyeball representing the quantum observer, looking at its tail that represents the information side of the information equals reality concept that we talk about regularly with this project. Wheeler also coined the phrase it from bit, which ties nicely to these discussions. So is the universe itself a self-excited circuit that was most excited at the Big Bang and is slowly winding down from there? Or was the universe in a superposition of possible states until life first emerged somewhere and began observing more organized versions of the universal wave function from that point on in the world line? The biocentric universe theory supports the latter idea. Perhaps Stuart Kaufman's God 2.0 supports the former? I think there's interesting evidence for both ideas, but ultimately I lean more towards the idea that there are organizing patterns in the extra dimensions which exist outside of time and space, and which have selected this, or any other, universe, and which keep the universe from dissolving into chaos. Love and Gravity is a blog entry of mine from last year which takes this idea out to a more metaphysical level if you're interested. I've used similar logic to argue for dark matter and dark energy as evidence of extra dimensions. There are two other more recent blog entries I would invite you to read about these ideas of extra dimensional patterns, quantum weirdness and water, and time crystals. In my follow-up book to Imagining the Tenth Dimension, a collaboration with visual artist Marilyn E. Robertson called O is for Omniverse, we devoted the letter J to John Wheeler. I'd like to finish by showing the video for letters I and J from that book, and you can see a lot more if you go to omniverse.tv. Next time, we're going to look at Timelessness and the Ultimate Ensemble. O is for Omniverse. I and J. Information and reality equal each other. Can this be? If information... A word that starts with I equals reality. Try to visualize how patterns and shapes that flow within and behind and around create what we're in. Energy or mass, genes, memes or spines, waves and shapes, fractals and lines. I is also for indeterminacy, the unobserved state that underlies reality, where all possible states unfold together and find their balance in perfect symmetry. J is for John Wheeler, a famous physicist who drew a strange eyeball looking at its tail, as a way to imagine how some branches of our line might be changed in the past as we look back from today, so the branching tree that extends from now is even more surprising. It branches either way.